All right, you know what? I'm just gonna use the microphone and the camera for this because I don't have all my stuff here with me, but I wanted to talk about stability. Um, and I don't just mean stability in cameras and lenses and stuff like that, but I mean in life in general. Um, I think, you know, stability is really important, obviously, in relationships, in your job and your income. Um, you know, like to know what's going on most of the time so we can plan from day to day and moment to moment. Um, it's a good idea to know what's going on, what you can count on. And um, I think it's the same thing with these lenses, you know, and these cameras. Like, you know, if you have a Sony a6400, which I have, and you don't have in-body stabilization, then that's something that you have to deal with. Um, if you have a lens, like the Viltrox 23mm f1.4, like I have, doesn't have stabilization. Or my Samyang 12mm, no stabilization. And so that's just something you have to deal with. You know, because you're going to get that camera shake, you know. So, here's the thing. I mean, first with regards to real life. I mean, stabilization is, I mean, st stability is awesome, obviously. But I also think it's good to be able to deal with uncertainty. You know, to be able to, to, be able to deal with things happening spontaneously that you're not prepared for so that you have to react and make the most of a circumstance or a situation, you know? I mean, you know, what if you're married to somebody for 30 or 40 years and they wake up one morning and decide they want to change their whole life and they decide that you are not going to have anything to do with that? It's happened. It happens to people. Um, what if something like the pandemic comes and you lose your job, you know? And what if you did not qualify for the pandemic insurance and you had to figure it out? How are you going to pay your bills, you know? Um, some people are able to go with the flow because they're used to instability, you know? So as much as that can cause a lot of trauma and it can cause a lot of pain and it can be a very difficult way to live, sometimes I think it prepares you for what life can sometimes throw at you that is not so predictable. And so I say all this to say, you know, I was watching millions of videos when I was trying to buy lenses for my camera. You know, again, I have the A6400. And, you know, I was watching all these videos and it was affecting my decisions as to what to buy to pair with my camera. You know, I have the A6400, it's got no stabilization. So I was thinking I should stay away from all these other lenses, but you know, then I found these lenses that were really inexpensive. And actually, here's a story of what really happened. I, I tried for months to buy the Sony 10 to 18 f4 wide angle lens, like super wide, right? And I tried to buy it on eBay because I wasn't going to spend $800 for a lens. And so I kept going to eBay and I kept being the highest bidder. And then some of these, you know, professional eBay people would swoop in at the last minute and outbid me and I kept losing the lens. And this went on for months. And so finally I was like, you know what, maybe the universe is telling me I don't need that lens, right? And so I decided to try the Samyang 12 millimeter, it's ultra wide, but it's a manual lens. You know, it's got no stabilization, it's got no autofocus, it's completely manual. But the thing is I had just shot a film on my cell phone and I used nothing but manual focus the whole time. I mean, I don't really even trust autofocus all the time, you know? Like, I'm using right now the Sony 18-105, to and it loses focus a lot. Like, if the lighting is not perfect, the autofocus is just not something you can always count on. And so, I got that Samyang, and it turns out that I, I love it. I love it so much. And then I bought the Viltrox 23mm f1.4 because I wanted a proper 35mm field of view. Um, because I, f I find that that's how... I see the world, you know. I mean, it's hard to explain, but when I look out my window, I kind of compare that to when I set my 18 to 105 to 23, which is really 35 because it's a crop sensor. That's how I kind of see the world. So I bought the Viltrox because I wanted something light, and I also wanted something, you know, wide open, you know, that could 
work well in low light situations and give me more bokeh in the background if I wanted it. And so I bought the Viltrox on eBay cheap. I got it brand new for very, very little money. And I'm in love with this lens. I love it. And so here's the thing. Obviously, it's better to have stabilization in your lenses and your camera. It makes life easier. It saves a lot of time. It just makes things more manageable. But I think if you're beginning, and you know, I spent the last year and a half learning how to do this, you know, transitioning from theater to film. I mean, not leaving theater, hopefully, you know, if the pandemic lets me get back on stage at some point. But, you know, I spent the last year and a half learning how to do this. And I'm really grateful that I learned on these lenses that had no stabilization and this camera that has no stabilization because now when I go back and use a lens like this one that has stabilization it feels so solid to me you know like I really have a handle on how to do this you know like I I took the Viltrox and I took the Samyang and I learned how to like make it a part of my body you know I really learned how to hold it so that I really had it under control to eliminate as much of that camera shake as possible you know kind of Reminded me of, you know, like I taught myself how to play the guitar when I was a little kid. And it was just a completely organic experience, you know? Like I just had to learn on my own, flying by the seat of my pants, you know? I had no teacher, I had no books, I had no school, I had nothing. I just learned. I had the guitar, I had six strings, you know, I had tuning, you know, machines. I mean, I had a guitar. I had the music right there. So I just learned by ear and by moving my fingers around. It's the same thing with this, you know, I learned how to do this without stabilization. So do I want stabilization? Would I love to get a full frame camera with in-body stabilization? Of course. You know, would I love to have all lenses with stabilization? Of course. And eventually I probably will. But I'm also quite sure that I'm going to want to experiment with like cinema lenses at some point, you know, um, lenses that don't have stabilization. And I'm probably going to want to work with you know, proper cinema cameras that don't have autofocus and stuff like that. Like, I just feel like I'm really preparing myself for any scenario so that I have options so that I don't get in a situation where I'm like, oh my God, I only know how to use autofocus and, you know, I need stabilization. Otherwise, I just can't do it. Like, I can't take the job. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be limited like that. So anyway, I'm going to stop now because I'm actually standing in front of my window and it's getting dark outside and Maybe I'm coming in and out of focus right now, but um, thanks for putting up with this technological, technologically challenged moment with the Sony a6400 and my Sony 18-105 lens. I'm standing in front of my window here in the Bronx. I hope I stayed in focus for most of this. And um, those are my thoughts on stability and stabilization. You know, you always have to be prepared for whatever life brings you. You just, you never know. You know, nothing's promised, nothing's guaranteed. But the only thing that you can guarantee is your own ability to keep moving. Always keep moving until you can't move anymore. That's it. So thanks again. I hope you're well. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.